Good day, dear students, and this is Lesson 4 for Oral Communication, and today we will talk about the different speech contexts. So to begin our lesson, let's go to our objectives. At the end of this learning unit, you will be able to characterize the different speech contexts. We will compare and contrast the different speech contexts in your assessments, and finally, we will identify what speech contexts were used in uh, the different real life scenarios which will be given to you. So in this lesson, we will talk about first, the definition of a speech context and second, we will also discuss the types of speech contexts. So let's begin. What are speech contexts? Okay, how are they understood and defined? Speech context refers to the situation or the environment where the communicative event is taking place. This is the definition given by Alcantara in 2019. This means that we are pertaining to how uh, a communicative event is situated, be it the number of speakers, the number of listeners, uh, how big your audience is, and even the, the surroundings, the, the place, the environment where the communicative event is taking place. And this involves the medium of communication as well as the size of the audience or the receivers, as I have previously mentioned. So when we talk about uh, speech contexts, there are two general types. We have intrapersonal and we have interpersonal. Now let's try to compare and contrast. Well, both these contexts require a speaker or a sender and a receiver. They are both present in both contexts. However, there is a slight difference in terms of the number of uh, speakers and listeners in this particular context. So when we say intrapersonal, intra means inside, which means that communication resides within the speaker. And this implies that the speaker is also the receiver of the message. Okay, so in what instances do we see intrapersonal communication? We can see this in monologues or even in um, in place wherein the character gives a soliloquy. Okay, so what are uh, specific examples? Well, first one, when you talk to yourself during the exam. Okay, uh, sometimes when we take difficult examinations, we tell ourselves, uh, oh, you can do this, okay? Uh, this is what you reviewed last night. Uh, why can't you remember the answer to this question? These are things that you tell yourself, not necessarily to others, but you tell yourself in secret, and that in itself is an example of intrapersonal communication. Uh, in literature, we also have uh, Valjean's soliloquy in Les Miserables, uh, the scene where he rips up the, uh, the document for his parole. That is an example of a soliloquy when he when he asks who am I and at the end he says uh, my name is Jean Valjean so that is a soliloquy and that is also an example of intrapersonal communication however on the other hand we also have interpersonal communication when we say interpersonal this occurs between one person and another person or among different people this is not inside the, the, the speaker. So this occurs between or among two or more interlocutors or communicators, and we usually have a different set of speakers and receivers. So in interpersonal communication, there are five, five subtypes. We have dyad or dyadic, we have small group, we have mass, organizational, and public. So let's define them one by one. When we say dyad, this means two. There is one speaker and one other receiver. So there are two interlocutors. When we say small group, this usually happens within a group composed of three 
to 15 people wherein the 3 to 15 people in that group are all speakers and receivers. The third one is what we call mass communication. And in mass communication, there, there are speakers or there is one speaker or maybe multiple speakers, but communication is being sent out or it is broadcast to an audience via TV, radio, print, or more in the more modern times, we also make use of social media media okay so when you go to facebook live when you stream a game and talk to your audience that is called mass communication um, reporting on tv or in the in the radio or when you print out a news article that is also called as mass communication next the fourth one we have organizational Organizational happens between or among and within the members of an organization. So this, this does not happen between people from different companies or different organizations. Instead, this has something to do with the members of that organization. What are examples of organizational communication? Um, when your boss or your superior sends out a memorandum, or an announcement to your department. That is an example of interpersonal communication, specifically the organizational subtype. And then finally, we also have the public communication. Now, this is quite different because um, in mass communication, the speaker uses uh, different media like TV, print, radio, or social media. And your audience might not necessarily be in the same location as the speaker. However, in public communication, the speaker and the receiver or the audience are in the same location, but there, there is no use of TV, print, uh, radio, or social media. Instead, it is a live performance. You are watching a live performance. What's one example of public communication? When your teacher uh, gives a lecture inside the classroom, usually the classroom is composed of around 40 students. That is public communication. The speaker and the audience are in the same class. Or um, a pastor or a priest inside the church, uh, when he or she is giving um, the sermon, that is also an example of public communication. And with that marks the end of our lesson for today. I hope that you learned something from this instructional video. And should you ever need additional readings, you can refer to these references. I have included them in your PowerPoint presentation, the one uploaded in your learning management system, so that you can access them for further reading. Well, this has been Sir Dardar. I hope that you all will have a wonderful day ahead. I'll see you in the next video. Toodles.